Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my job properly, I should be in black and white right now. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of it, the description. This is the As Requested by You second look with the Made by Mitchell Feet on the Ground palette. So if you want to find out which colours you wanted to see me use and how well they performed then as ever my darlings Sammy the Sloth confirms you have the best seat in the house and he also recommends, as do I that now is that time to grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up get comfy and enjoy my darlings because here comes your second tutorial hey hey my lovelies I am back okay I have had a lot of requests to do another look uh, on film with this palette so that's exactly what I'm about to do um, first look went down really well, people seemed to really enjoy it, had a lot of requests for another look, so why not? I'm going to be playing with it anyway, I might as well film it. Uh, it's very overcast, so I don't know how well my lighting is going to be doing today, because I rely on natural daylight and then I have strip lights behind the camera. I mean, it is literally half past ten. It looks like about three o'clock out there, so... And it's winter, so three o'clock, winter, getting dark, you know. But, uh, this remains a teaching channel. So I zoom in really tight to my eyes, so that's the only thing on screen. It does mean that when I'm adding pigment or changing brushes or you know, cleaning brushes when I'm looking down you get to see my marvellous hairline but um, I think that's a, a fair trade-off for being able to see what's going on if your eyesight's not too good and you watch me on a phone. Um, it also means you're not distracted by the number of times uh, I pull a face with pain. It's also easier for me to cut those moments out without it being too obvious. However, something I don't cut out is any of the blending. However long it takes to blend a shadow, that's how long it will appear on screen for. Because I want you to have a good idea of exactly how long it would take to create a blended look with whichever palette I'm using. Um, so I go at a speed that I hope most beginners can keep up with. It's partly due to my chronic pain, but also because I want all skill levels to be able to keep up with me, because you can always speed me up if you're more advanced. Right, I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment, which will be discussing the difference between deep set and hooded eyes. A lot of people who think they have hooded eyes actually have deep set eyes. Um, a lot of people don't really know the difference between the two so I'm gonna, the, the clip will talk you through how to work out which type of eye you have and it will also tell you the best way to apply your makeup to it to give you the most longevity and the best look to start with. That clip is up close and personal, it's just my eyes. Once it's done, I'll be back to pop some of those pigments on my lids. Here's your clip. Now, 
Um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am uh, back. Right. I'm going to start off with one of my Royal and Lang Nickel Chic Pro crease brushes, so a big old fluffy brush. Um, I have had a request to use A Mood and Venom, which is actually the colour of my wedding dress and the colour of my bridesmaid's dresses. The fact that I managed to not use those 
the first time I used this palette. That's pretty good going for me. Normally if those colours are in there I'll go straight for them. Um, so I'm going to start off with... Let's try one of the more neutral um, matte shades. I'm going to go into Breaking, which is like a, a, sort of a very, very neutral sort of taupish colour. I hope you can see that on the brush there. Now, as always, I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz Blend rather than the Windscreen Wiper. Hold the brush right at the end. If it's long enough, brace the end of the handle against the palm of your hand. Gives you a bit more stability at the other end. And we're going to do natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and a reverse turns to come back out again. The reason I do this is twofold. One, I'm 46, the skin on my eyelids moves, and two, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers who have similar issues. And if you just do the windscreen wiper, which is what you'll see all of the big beauty gurus shows in, you're going to end up with your lid folding over on itself and you're going to get those tiger stripes. So, I always start at the outside edge because if it does deposit too much pigment, it's much easier to sort out when your nose isn't in the way. I'm going to start halfway to my natural crease in my brow and little circular Viennese Waltz blend just little tiny circles now I tapped off a lot because of how much kick up there is in pan so let's build this colour up a little bit How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, I really hope that tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, I hope it is as fabulous as you are. How'd you get on at the dentist, Will? Go okay. Okay, you can you can just about see this colour against my skin. Um, it's a very light, taupey stone sort of shade, but it is building up. Right, let's do the same this side. Let's see if we can get it to build up a little bit quicker this side. I'll just tap off a bit less. Because this eye tends to get more full out anyway, because it moves more, because it got pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital when I was a kid. That's why I've got these super dope creases just here. We persist with the Viennese Waltz blend. And we just keep twirling. I have to say, this particular shade. Whilst I'm quite liking it, I do think there is a risk of it looking ashy on deeper skin tones. Simply because it's not showing up that well against the white base that I've got down. That's what I have to say. 
Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off. I'm going to go in with Venom, which is the teal shade. I'm going to use the same brush because I want it quite blown out. I don't want it too densely packed, you know. So, we'll do this just slightly lower. Repeating exactly the same thing. Then these warps blend, black hole, and reverse turn to come back. Now that's actually gone on. That, bear in mind that's just one dip in the pan. I've not dipped back in for any more pigment yet. And that's a really nice, soft blend. I do struggle sometimes on this outer edge with very dry patches. Um, almost like a like an eczema. I must admit, I'm really surprised at how many people were wanting to see more looks with this. Very often I'll say, you know, let me know if you want to see any specific colours and I don't really get much feedback from it. So I tend to play with it off camera rather than on because I'm like, well, nobody's requested any specific looks. I've got a lot of other palettes to work through. But, you know, if you do request a specific look or say that you want to see more looks with the palette, then I'll quite happily film with it again. I mean, I, I've got a very large collection of eyeshadow palettes. Um, and I do try and rotate them through so that I use all of my palettes. Um, it's one of the reasons why when I say I absolutely love this palette and you look at it and you think well there's, there's not much happening in that palette. That's because I've got so many and because I have a very light touch in the palettes as well. I'm not, I don't scour hard into a palette, into a pan. And I always clean my palette before I put it away because if a palette doesn't look clean, I don't feel inspired to use it. It needs to look. It can look used, it can have, you know, pan in it, it can have huge dents in some of the shades, but it needs to be clean for me to... So I've got one of those new ring doorbells so I can actually see if there's someone at the door that actually needs answering or if it's people I can just ignore like surveyors and things. Right, to clean this brush off, as you can see it has stained it a bit. These things happen. Right, I'm going to get a smaller brush or a brush with a smaller head on it. I think I'll go for this one. Now whatever the size of the head of the brush that's how far it's going to blend the shadow out. So you can see the difference there between those two. And then if I was to get say a pencil brush you'd see you know, an even smaller one again but uh, yeah 
and of course I have these ones which these are slightly more dense than this one this is very floppy but it's really great for getting right in here if you do want a more diffused look but I'm going to go into a mood which is that purple and I'm just going to start off I'm going to start at the edge of my crease so if you have moved your crease this is where you follow wherever you've moved it to I'm just going to start just on this outer corner here, just blending in some of this purple, bringing it down onto the outer edge of the mobile lid and just that a really nice blend. Now obviously purples and greens are the most difficult colours to create. We've established he can do greens. Let's see how he does on this purple. Now I'm going to do super, super tiny, tiny, tiny little circles, barely moving the brush. All the way through. Just kind of drag the last little bit and then circular again all the way back up. Now hopefully you can see that's given a lot more definition to the eye. Anything dark goes back and anything light comes forward. I might actually pop a little bit of this on. I can't see a damn thing, I'm relying on muscle memory here and just hoping that I'm still on screen and in focus. Yes, I was. I was. So I'm just going to pop some on the start of the lid there as well. And then I'm going to flick with the brush. I will be tidying it up with a micellar wipe. But I just want to give the illusion of lift at the edge of the eye there. Can you see how that makes the eye look like it's coming up and out? And that's the effect I'm looking for. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do eyeliner today. Depends very much how my eye behaves. when I'm putting all of my base products etc on I must admit I am actually really enjoying this palette and I'm so glad that people wanted to see more looks with it because as I said you know, if most of the time I'll say, let me know if you want to see more looks, and nobody really says they want to see specific colours or anything. So I'm like, oh, okay. So they kind of enjoyed the tutorial, but weren't that fussed with the palette. So I'll just use a different palette and just use these off screen to see what I think of them, kind of thing. Um, But uh, it is always very nice when people do request to see more looks 
the certain palette. Now, with my mobile lid on my left eye, I have to do something that I tell you never to do, which is I have to pull my eyelid out, because if I don't, I've found from experience, what happens is I get loose pigment packing into the crease, and then through the day that starts falling into my eye, falling down my face, and just ends up wrecking the look. But I only pull the lid out far enough to straighten the creases. I put the colour on as quickly as possible and then I gently put the eye back. I don't pull it out to my ear roll, I don't just let go so it pings back. So I'll show you what I mean. Can you see what I mean about the tiger striping? I just whacked it on the side of my nose. Just as well I haven't done my base yet, isn't it? So far, I am very, very much liking this. Problem now is I have to narrow down which shimmer I want to use. I don't want to use either of the ones I've already used. I'm just going to use this pad with some micellar water on just to tidy up around the edges. Oh, sorry. Itchy nose must be the last of the tree pollen coming down. Because my uh, silver birch tree still has leaves on it at the moment. It's starting to shed, but. I don't like using tape to do this. Because if the tape is sticky enough to stop powder from getting under the edge of it, then it's going to be sticky enough to pull your eye skin around when you take it off. Right. Um, that one. That one. That one. Those are the three I've narrowed it down to. That would take away from the teal. Do you know what? I think I might go for that pinky one. Bearing in mind, my name is Angela. No, it's Angie. This shade is called Angelina. And one of my mates, Michaela, <laughs> calls me Angelina Bumfluff. Don't even... And then it was Angelina Bomarina. So, yeah, I'm going to use the Angelina shade. I'm going to use um, a little lip brush like this. Uh, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will kill the pigment. However, once I've put the pigment on the brush, I am going to be wetting it with this. This is just Makeup Obsession Fit Fix Fixing Spray. You can use any type of spray that you want. You can use a moisturising one like MAC or Mario Badescu. Um, you can use a fixing spray, a priming spray, a setting spray, a finishing spray. You can even save an empty bottle, put some water in it and just use fresh water each time. Just so long as you don't put a wet brush into a press pigment. 
Right, so I'm going to pick up some of this pigment on the brush, this Angelina pigment. These are so soft, they're almost like a super shock formula. They're that soft when you put the brush into them. I always wet shimmers regardless of brand because it helps to minimise fallout. Right, this is now wet, so I'm going to tuck it into my knuckles and spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture coming down from the ferrule and loosening the glue holding the bristles, because then we won't have a brush. We'll have a stick. Right, so I'm just going to pop this onto that middle third of the lid. But so far has not been blessed with pigment. Now of course you can use your finger to do this if you want. I personally don't like doing that because you transfer oils from your finger into the pan no matter how clean your finger is and you can end up causing hard pan. I'm just going to use the very tip of the bristles just to gently smudge the edges where that mates. That's nice. Wipe the brush dry. And I'm going to load it back up to do the other eye. That's really pretty actually. Picking up on the uh, purple really nicely. notice that this eye moves a lot more than the other one does and that's simply because it had been pulled around so much when I was like five, six years old at the ophthalmic hospital before I finally realised that actually I should have had an operation before I was five and had I had that would have fixed things and I wouldn't have gone blind in the eye later on, so yay for the 70s. There. Right, my lovelies, I am going to pause you while I go and pop some base products on and then I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. So, I've got quite a while now before I can speak to you again, but for you, it's going to be completely instant. See you right now. Hello. For once, I've done normal coloured brows. I know! Who even am I? Um, I use my Revolution Pro Define and Fill brow pencil. It's one of those micro pencils so you can actually get the, the hair like strokes. Yeah, I quite like that. Okay, back to the neutral palette. Oh. Right. Going in with flat top brush and I'm going to go into a mood which is that purple and I'm going to link that up and just run it along to the lower lash line. Yes, I flinched this side because being blind in this side I haven't got any peripheral vision. So I'm relying on muscle memory and a viewfinder that's a little bit far away for comfort when you haven't got your contact lens in or your glasses on. Right, 
This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, flat topped but chunky, a bit like me. Um, and I really like this, it's great for smudging out lower lashes. And I am going to go into, I'm going to try a different shade, I'm going to go into Clay Baby, which is like baby nappy poop brown. I'm just going to use that for buffing the lower lash line. I mean, you can use any chunky blender brush to do this with. I just happen to really like this one. That light out there is getting worse, it really is. This is such a great brush for going full on grunge on your lower lash line. I like that. I like that. I'm going to go into, bless you, on an old lip brush that I bought years ago and just use that. Under the tail of my brow. Then I'm going to go into Lime Aid. And use that for my inner corner. Bringing that along. And blending it in the baby nappy poop brown under the eye. I can never understand when people look at a really colourful palette and go, I don't know how to create a look with it. Well, I've used what, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colours on my eyes today. But, even though I've done a colourful one, there's no reason why you couldn't substitute the shades that I've used for similar toned shades in your neutral palette and still create the same look. You know, you could still create the halo eye with the flicked out wing either side with a brown and orange palette, you know? So... Right, my beautiful ones, I'm going to pause you one last time. Uh, I'm going to decide what I'm going to do for highlighter. Bung that on my face. I am super tempted to try this limeade, even though it might leave a green streak. But I'm super tempted. I might try it and if it's too much I'll bung a white over the top or something. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to do highlight, mascara, lippy, something with the hair. I'll be back with my finished look. Don't go anywhere. Because for you, once again my darlings, instant. I am back. Okay, I did use the green on my cheeks. I think I can just about get away with it. Uh, the mascara is one of the little ones that Hedda sent to me. This is the Clinique High Impact Mascara. Lippy is Fenty Undefeated. 
I just thought it tied in really nicely with the purple on the eye look. So, there we go folks. There is your second look with the Feet on the Ground palette. Uh, let me know if there are any other colours in here you want to see me use. Once again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. All the way down. Just let me know which shades of those, if any, you would still like to see me use. So, there we go. Look number two. Which was your favourite? The first one, the really green khaki with a brown lip? Or do you like this kind of my wedding colours still got green in it, but look at the palette. Um, and a purple lipped look. So which one do you prefer, first or second? And is there a third look you'd like to see me do? Right, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you at a rate of knots. Um, it's it's so frustrating because they're leaving my films in your suggested list so it's not immediately obvious that you've been unsubscribed so uh, yeah please double check that also double check that your notifications still say all not personalized because mine got knocked back and not that they seem to be sending emails at the moment but with them all being personalised I wouldn't have got any anyway so in the hope that they're actually going to start sending emails again just you know just double check that yours say all not personalised if you're new here and you've tripped over me some other way hi hello welcome uh, I hope you enjoyed it here this is the kind of thing you get from me you get random waffling in what I'm told is a soothing voice about everything and nothing in particular whilst applying coloured pigments to my face and hopefully passing on a few tricks and tips to help your makeup application process just that little bit easier. That being said, it would be lovely if you two would like to join the 4F family super easy to do all you have to do is hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey then you ring my bell ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube starts sending emails again soon in the meantime as well as a rather large back side I have a very large back catalogue of films you can watch uh, ranging from everything from product reviews, tutorials, collabs, challenges, tags, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So if you're looking for a little bit of me time and you need to be calmed down and chill out and everything's just getting too much, as I've said for what feels like forever now, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up and indulge my darlings right as ever my beauties all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time Bye for now.